Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Talking Elite Fitness. It's Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez here with you today, kind of down to a skeleton crew. Mm-hmm. Lauren is, she's traveling. Mm-hmm. She's kind of on a vacation. And our good friend, Brian Friend, he's moving today. Yeah. So. Yeah, send some positive God vibes speed. his way. Brian Friend. I just pictured him in the Clark Griswold, uh, <laughs> like, what is it, the Aztec or the station the wagon? The family truckster, man. Yeah, just loaded, all sorts of fitness stuff just loaded up on mm-hmm. there. A well, bunch yeah. of documents. Hopefully that goes, well. moving is the worst. Yeah. I, I hate moving. Every time I do it, I'm like, this is the last time. Never doing this again. It's just crazy. Worst. Like, I have mad respect for, like, the uh, army brats and military families that have mm-hmm. to move all the time. That's Oof. brutal. Uh, here's what we're gonna, going to do today. We, in a little bit, are going to be speaking with Mariah Moore, who is the director of the CrossFit documentary, CrossFit Games documentary, I should say. Uh, what is it? Fit Us on Earth Retroactive. Mm-hmm. You and I both got to watch it. We got an early, sort of early sneak peek. Watched it last night. Uh, and we're going to talk to Mariah about some of those things. That is available for pre-order, correct? No, it is. Uh, so if you were listening to this now, and so it's we're going to release it on Friday. It's yeah. now. Yeah, it's down. I mean, yeah, if you're listening to this on Friday, it's out now. If you're listening to this on Thursday, we release this a little early. You can pre-order it, and it'll be available tomorrow. So just a, a like a quick kind of rundown because we talked about the, I talked about this on the time cap. It's available on Apple, Amazon, Google, Xbox, Vudu, and uh, Vimeo. Mm-hmm. That's in English. And it's available in like 42 countries, United States, Canada, all the big ones. Um, most of the uh, English-speaking countries. You can check it on the game site now. Then it's also available in Latin America, Spanish, on Apple, Amazon, Google, Xbox, and Vimeo. In basically all the Latin America countries. Um, and, you know, Apple is probably the most widely available uh, platform, but it is available on the multiple platforms in a couple of different areas. Uh, that's always to purchase. So uh, it won't be available to rent until July 14th. Um, and by next week, what, Tuesday, July 4th, it'll be available uh, in more languages, Castilian Spanish, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, Parisian French. And it'll be basically available in all of the countries in that set and like that. Um, what do they used to call it? trying to think of that 23 and me when you get your like dna back mm. they call it like the uh iberian peninsula oh well what, done yeah i think it's called so spain portugal um it also goes inland a little bit belgium switzerland luxembourg uh brazil france you know those those countries that use those languages primarily and then um and, and another month after that uh august 14th it'll be available in korean german danish dutch norwegian finnish and swedish um, and then of course, you know, all the previous releases won't be available to rent until July 14th. So a ton of options there. Um, but yeah, you can, you can get it starting Friday. So if you're listening to us on Friday, go check it out now. You can, you can watch it, watch it for the weekend, you know? Yeah. I knocked it out in two sittings yesterday. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, I basically, yeah, I would say two and, sittings. And it, there's going to, like, there's a lot of stuff that people are going to really enjoy. And they're like, it's, uh, there's. You know, there, there's the cool behind the scenes stuff. There's some stuff that I learned from watching it that I was like, I didn't even know that. Like, there's some cool insight to to Roman in the second, the back nine event mm-hmm. that about his yoke that I, you know, and the way he measured it that I didn't know that I thought yeah. it was cool. There's some really good stuff, and we'll talk more to Mariah about this, uh, specifically with Tia towards the end. I think the like the the last twenty minutes were phenomenal. Yeah, like they, I was I was really impressed. Uh, with that. So but looking forward to talking to her here in just a second. But before we do that, uh, one or two just quick little news tidbits we want to get out. Uh, games, athletes, jerseys yes, are on sale now. And the way I understand it is that they're a little more expensive this year. But you're getting like the exact kind of jersey that the athletes wear. Like if, so if, you've, if you're a fan of other sports, You know, like if you're going to buy an NFL jersey, you don't get, unless you want to drop like 300 bucks, like the ones that they actually wear on the field. Yeah. There's different like levels. Well, these are going to be like the exact same things. Yeah. So like, first off, 20 bucks from every purchase goes directly to the athlete. So it's a a way of directly supporting them, supporting their jersey, you know, uh, in a very cool way, similar to other, you know, stick and ball sports and stuff like that. But, um, 
one thing that I remember popping up from last year is people are like, hey, why are these why are these jerseys more expensive than just a regular shirt? Or um, is is that twenty bucks part of the reason why it's jacked up so they can make their margin or whatever? But um, you know, I reached out and, and talked to some people from Noble about the process, and it's not just a screen print that they use to make these jerseys. It's the actual exact way replica way, or so not replica. It's the exact authentic way that they make the actual jerseys that the the athletes wear on the field which is like a, a special heat transfer process that's basically made custom to each order uh which is why the price is a little bit more because the mm-hmm. they put a little bit more into the actual authentic athlete jerseys and they do so here so you get the actual um um legit legit jerseys it's, it's no different than like when you buy a jersey you know, if you buy an authentic yeah, Rams exactly. jersey yep. versus like right. a replica, mm-hmm. the process to make the authentic one is a little bit more involved. And so you're going to pay a little bit more of a premium. And that's the same case here. Um, I think actually the Noble Plus uh, Instagram has like a, a cool little like sizzle video on how they actually make it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, you can order it now if you want it before the games. And and you every individual athlete is included on that. Um, oh, and, and they even you can even get like, so for example, Justin Medeiros' jersey, they have like the gold years like the years that he won yeah yeah, yeah. Name. So that's that's pretty awesome yep you can't customize your own though correct like that's not a... uh, i think it's like two colors basically are up 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 for grabs but i'm just saying like you can get like a marquez jersey oh nobody wants that one. <laughs> oh, you would yeah i mean maybe I'd, be, I'd wear that That'd yeah be pretty cool if you i'm trying to figure out like who i'd want to pick here i'd probably have to go with jason smith just being like the old guy you yeah, know? yeah 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 rock me a jason smith you know hashtag master solidarity right, right there so yeah check it out it's nobleproject.com uh they're sharp. They're, they're nice. Yeah. And, they're nice and clean. Yeah, nice and clean. It's a there's a there's like a navy blue and I don't know what that color it's is. Like a minty. It's, it's not like really a, mint. It's it's almost like it's like if army green and mint had a baby. Yeah, mint chip. There you go. So you just got a little bit we'll of get that a, a Lankowitz jersey. Ooh, big brawn. That'd be a good. I, one. I like Dallin's jersey just because it says pepper, pepper. on it. Mm. <laughs> Sprinkle a little bit of wizard pepper <laughs> on it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, before we get to our interview with uh, Mariah Moore, the director of the CrossFit Games documentary, Fit Us on Earth Retroactive, I want to tell you about our sponsor for today, and that is Working Against Gravity. Summer is here. I mean, it, it, it's, it is upon us. So if you it's are- It finally looks like it too. Yeah, we're getting, like I was saying today, we're getting that paid subscription weather back. <laughs> yeah. Like the sun is out. Like I'm, I got shorts on. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, probably put on the flip-flops a little bit later. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're looking to, you know, get in that summer shape, because- Maybe you're gonna pop the top a little bit, go out to the go out to the pool, the beach, whatever. Uh, you're going to need to get your nutrition dialed in to do that. And mm-hmm. working against gravity, they are your perfect nutrition sherpas to guide you through these next couple of months. Yeah, and and you know whether it's the summertime, the wintertime, it really they are they are four seasons capable with their nutrition mm. coaching because they've worked with over thirty thousand clients. They have their team of certified nutrition coaches. Shout out to my coach Amy, who has been guiding me through some adjustments in, in, in my fitness and how, how I want to operate and adjust in my macros accordingly. But basically, when you sign up, they'll match you with a one-on-one coach, just like I have, uh, who will provide a personalized macronutrient uh, plan based on some of the parameters that you can also provide, you know, whether you want to be more strict paleo or you're a keto athlete or, you know, you have some other restrictions around your diet, whether it's allergies, things like that. They will make it 100% custom to you and they'll tailor it to your goals whether you want to be stronger, whether you want to improve your general health and wellness, um, they'll be able to do that because nailing down your nutrition is such a big part of it. I mean, let's be honest. You know, we work hard in the gym. You know, we always want to make sure that the nutrition that we put in our bodies is kind of fueling that. So they also offer some one-time, you know, weight loss meal plans or anything like that if you want a more uh, a structured, specific, personalized plan for your body's goals um, and training as well. So if you head to workingagainstgravity.com, Go click Get a Coach. You can read more about their approach overall and what some of the membership options that they provide. They have a ton of free material for you to read and learn more about nutrition as well if you're just generally curious. Um, And then once you're ready to sign up and and pick your membership options, type in the code ELITE because it's a special discount that they've created just for us. I think we're the first uh, crew to actually have a discount with WAG. Um, ELITE will get you 50 bucks off your first month. Um, and you can get going on your nutrition. Like I always say, you know, the best start time to start looking after your nutrition was a long time ago, but the next best time is right now. Um, and go to workingagainstgravity.com, use the code elite, get started, uh, on your nutrition journey. You won't regret it. Trust me. 
Let's bring in our guest for today. She is the director of Fittest on Earth Retroactive. She is Mariah Moore. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, congratulations on the completion of the documentary. Tommy and I got to, to watch it. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff in there. I think people are going to enjoy. My first question for you is, is how do you take a competition that runs like five days, 13 events, 80 participants, and boil that down to an hour and 40 minutes? Uh, we, we use the terminology in the space of, <laughs> it's terrible, but you have to start killing babies. <laughs> you <laughs> oh know, like gosh. when you're whittling. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, but like when you start whittling down so mm -hmm. much good content, you have to start removing things that you really don't want to get rid of. Um, that's such a terrible term. I shouldn't have brought that up, but it, <laughs> yeah, that's like what essentially what it is. It's, it's hours and hours and hours of really good content that you have to just, you got to pick the best of the best. And a lot of, a lot of really great, great stuff gets left on the cutting room floor. And one thing I know Sean and I want to dive in today is a little bit of how the sausage gets made. You know, you've been a part of, you know, multiple documentaries in the past too, as well, but what did the the effort look like in terms of manpower bodies people that went into making this film this year in particular man it's a lot of people it's a really big crew and it, it's not just the it's not just the people that you see on the floor at the games shooting it's it's people like yourselves who are sitting in the booths doing the live calls that we're dependent on helping tell stories in post production um it's the broadcast cams that we 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 go to when we've missed a moment um it's yeah it's it's crazy we have our art director we were able to um bring in his daughter to um illustrate the poster art for us which was really cool um yeah there's edit it's editing it's it's graphics it's art direction it's it's to the shooters it's people helping set up interview rooms it's a massive team it takes a lot of people to pull it off when you show up on site how do you organize things to make sure that, you know, you're capturing what you need to capture and then you're keeping track of it all at the same time? Uh, it, there's just a lot of touching base throughout the, throughout the day with your key players. Um, we've, because I've been a part of making these documentaries for so long, um, I've gotten to work on the, the team, the on-site um, camera crew, and we've really gotten to um, slowly whittle down just exactly who who needs to be in what role and trying to set people up for success. And so we've really built this really incredible team that everybody knows what they're doing. And so there actually doesn't have to be a lot of oversight anymore. It's pretty much, hey, here's the main objective. Go out and do your thing. Like, I trust you guys. Um, but with, with the behind the scene cameras, we communicate a lot. Hey, I got this soundbite from this person. Hey, here's this storyline that we should really follow. This is we need to keep an eye out for that. And so, really, the the behind the scene camera guys are the ones that are are really touching base quite a bit. I have a follow up to that, and it's just and you mentioned like, hey, you someone might come back. Hey, I got the soundbite. We should really follow the storyline. I know you you go in with kind of a plan of what you want to do, but when something like that happens, that that causes you to sort of have to change directions and, and do it pretty quickly. It, how do you then manage that process throughout the entirety of the team so that you can kind of turn the Titanic to sort of refocus on what this story is going to be? I mean, honestly, we we're not really able to uh, shift direction too much because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we still have to like generally cover most things. And so we might be take one camera guy aside and be like, hey, make sure you film this one person and then let everybody else continue to do the general coverage. And a lot of that stuff, um, a lot of stuff we actually miss too in the moment. And it's brought up in like the post interviews. So like Patrick Bellner might say, oh, and this happened during this event. And we're like, oh shit, we didn't even realize that. And so <laughs> then that's when we have to start relying on the broadcast cams or the calls that you guys made or even just the post interviews to help tell that story and patch it together as best we can but for the most part um we don't redirect the whole ship it's it's taking a couple a camera maybe and saying like hey can you focus on this for this event please and what were those shifts were, were there any moments that stood out you were like oh man we have to go get this now any any things that were kind of checkpoints for that 
moments that we end up seeing in the film, maybe some moments that we don't see in the film that that kind of shifted that direction, at least for that moment, like you talked about? Yeah, um, when Tia tripped up on her triple unders, that was like a uh, scramble, let's redirect. I'm going to go sit with Shane up in the up in the, like the coach's area to get his reaction because now he's going to be stressed out, you know, something like that, or make sure you get a, a, a shot of her reaction to finding out she didn't, she didn't make it to the next, the next, um, heat, things like that. There's not, it doesn't happen very often. Not, there's not very much stuff that happens that like catches us off guard that we have to redirect too much. It's funny you mentioned that. Cause I wrote down one of my notes. I wrote shots of Shane's emotions in the crowd equal gold and a note. <laughs> can we have an or uh, a Shane or cam 24 seven? Cause I feel like watching him <laughs> squirm in, in the stands. Just, I don't know why he, he just wears his emotion on his sleeve. And I, 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 moments like that, I just, I absolutely love. I swear he loses years off of his life. Every games. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is a basket case. He's always so tired in the back. He's so tired because he's not sleeping and he's like, Tia just, sleeps and sleeps like he, she's good to go he's like but i'm up tossing and turning all night every single night so he's always stressed <laughs> after watching the the movie uh last night it, it was it, it was pretty clear and you know people people are gonna watch this and it and you focus on like the top of the of the the leaderboard the battle for like that's what the sense that i got what led you to that to sit to that decision to approach it that way this year as opposed to maybe you know picking a I don't know, a rookie or maybe someone who was uh, not expected to do as well and, and follow that person. You know, to be honest, <laughs> um, it was because I was asked to do the game, to do the documentary about three weeks before the games. And so I didn't uh, have a lot of oh, time wow. to like prepare. And mm -hmm. so it was just like, hey, we're just going to go in and we just got to, we're going to have to just generally capture and play it by ear. Um, I think if I had had a lot more time of to like pre- produce the whole thing i would have been like hey why don't we let's entertain these storylines or let's let's really dig into this guy or something like that i just we just unfortunately didn't have we didn't have the time to yeah, do that it's something i would love to do not eventually. saying that's wrong just like you said you know getting rid of good stuff and, and you can't do it all so yeah, yeah. just interested is the you know how, how you came to that decision that, that's cr that's crazy to me three three weeks before i don't know maybe i it blocked it out of my head uh, i just didn't remember that but you know, when you get yeah. that call and you're like, all right, three weeks before we got to, we got to make a movie <laughs> and it's probably about this time, you know, just early, early uh, July, almost. What are the first things you lock down right away? Uh, shooters and camera gear. <laughs> it's mm. okay. Who's available this close. And for the most part, the same guys are always available because they're all holding out hope we get to make another documentary. Um, and then uh, going to rent camera gear and praying that things are available in a few weeks. Those are the first things that we really start to try to figure out. Cause it's like, once we have, once we have guys and things to shoot on, we'll figure everything else out from there. What were some of the things that you said, you know what, th like this has got to be in, you know, they were like, they were never going to be on the chopping block. Ricky's story, Ricky's mm -hmm. story for sure. Well, and definitely the, uh, just because it's such a damn good story and mm -hmm. and i and being at the games i felt like at least for me i was like i don't know who i'm rooting for here on the men's side i was like i i i want to see justin win and i want to see ricky win and i want to see roman win i'm so trying to like i was like this is a storyline that is no matter what we have to tell because i couldn't i i we didn't know who was going to win and it was yeah it was crazy it was crazy and then also um the chatter in the back between the athletes about Ricky. <laughs> that was yeah. the kind of stuff I was like, that, was that has to go, this stuff's gold. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that kind of stuff for sure. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love the behind the scenes stuff that uh, like hearing the, the candor of athletes, you know, coming down from the emotion of events and things like that when, you know, they, ju they just seem to open up a little bit more in, in, those, in those scenes than maybe when they're in that kind of distilled or, or, or uh, or sanitized environment being back home is is there anything that like got cut ultimately that you're like oh man i hope one day this sees the light of day like some stuff that maybe would be great for you know behind the scenes type stuff or or editors cut type stuff um everything everything patrick vellner 
<laughs> he wasn't he wasn't <laughs> featured. He wasn't featured very much in it, and it was his stuff is just gold. Everything, everything that comes out of his mouth is just Patrick Bellner gold. His interview, his post interview was hilarious, and I wanted to fit it in so bad because it's just so good and it's so funny. And I was laughing the entire time conducting the interview. And so, yeah, everything Patrick Vellner that ended up on the cutting room floor, I just, I wish I could just put it out into the world. I, I'm still petitioning. I'm like, hey, I don't know why we aren't releasing the full length interviews. Just let's just post them. People want to watch them. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> I don't, that's a great idea. Actually. Yeah, absolutely. I would, that, I would, anytime you get to sit down with Patrick Vellner, it's always, it, it's always a rare treat. These, these documentaries, you know, the, the community loves them. And I, and I think they, they know exactly what to expect from them. You know, they, they, they know what they're going to get. So with, with that being said, how do you, you know, work within that formula, but at the same time, make it different so that they're not just, it's not just like rinse and repeat from what we did last year. Um, honestly, you kind of just have to depend on like lean on the story of the games. Um, mm -hmm. Again, just because there wasn't, there's not a lot of pre-production time there, there hasn't been for the past couple of years. Um, I was a little bit restricted in my ability to make them super different. Um, so this year was pretty exciting because I really felt like the men's story um, was more, not more interesting, but it definitely took center stage over the women's story, which has not been the case in many, many years. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that that definitely helped set things apart with this documentary is I feel like there's a far bigger focus on the the top men. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to spoil anything for obviously this people by the time this comes out, people will have the opportunity to go buy this and we really hope they do. Um, but you were embedded with Tia a bunch and you've had a long relationship with her getting to work with her for many years. Um, but I think the fact the 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 conflict, quote unquote, from the, the leaderboard early on provided a kind of an interesting perspective. And I'm curious if there was anything that you gleaned or learned from this process from her that you just hadn't seen in years past because of the scenario that she was in. Um, yeah, your, <laughs> your shooting day is very dependent on, on how the athlete feels. So at the end of every day for the first few, few days, people would be like, Hey, how'd your day go? And I was like, well, could have been better. Once he is back on top, I think it'll be going a lot better because it's just, it was, it's highly emotional for the athletes when they're not performing how they would like to be performing. And so they're far less open, far more reserved. Um, you can tell that you, you're no longer not welcomed into the fold, but more of like a, they're like, they would rather have less eyes on them at that moment. And so um definitely learning i learned body language a lot more um for the first few days mm -hmm. with her not doing well knowing when to back off um yeah so a lot of that kind of stuff <laughs> it was good though it was really good she was really gracious very very gracious um having me follow her around like that non-stop when she like she didn't want me there which i i don't blame her she wasn't she wasn't performing in the way that she would have liked to and to have a camera in your face when you're feeling all those emotions, but she was super gracious about it. There is some really good stuff, you know, from Tia behind the scenes, especially towards the end. You know, I, I thought like the last 20 minutes, I thought you guys, you know, absolutely stuck the landing. It was like, I, that, that to me was like the highlight of the whole thing. Like it was so good. All the stuff from Tia and, and Justin and, and Roman and, and all those moments. But did you, you know, I know you spent a lot of time with Tia. Did you learn anything different about her just, from a personal standpoint, having seeing her kind of go through what was the, you know, I mean, she still had it wrapped up going into the the last test, but there was some doubt for a little bit this year. Yeah, she, I had never seen her the way she was at the games that last year. She she just seemed a little bit different. Like it shouldn't, it didn't shock me when she told me she was pregnant because it was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And not because I don't believe she was pregnant at the games, but there was definitely, I could see the shift in her, the shift of needing mm -hmm. maybe a, a bit of a change. And she didn't, she didn't want to necessarily just walk away from it, but she was feeling a pull in a different direction. And so I got to witness a very different side of her. Um, 
yeah side of her that was just like okay i can see i can see that something's changing in you you're you, you need something different something else needs to happen right now in, in your life so it was it was cool to witness it was really cool to witness and i think um and i think uh she's gonna be really scary next year <laughs> she's she's already scary right now yeah, i've seen exactly. photos of her training she already yeah. looks like she could basically step back out of the games um but w one element i really enjoyed and we don't get to see it often um just because of the nature of the language barrier but i really enjoyed the interviews and the sound bites from roman how are you able to manage that because he was speaking in, in his native tongue in russian and you, you may not necessarily have a translator right there and you're trying to get the best out of him in these moments we were actually really lucky because we did have a translator right there. Um, he had his oh, translator nice. with him, Rosa Giles. Yeah, she was there with him all all week translating for everyone. And she was awesome. And she came to the interview room with us and conducted the interview for us. So we would, we would give her the questions we wanted to ask. And then she would ask for him. And then she would translate back to us what he had said. Um, and then post, um, we recruited um or we reached out to one of crossfit's um international uh li liaisons and mm -hmm. uh, asked if they had somebody that could just full-blown translate the interview for us and give us like all the the notes of what he was saying and so we did that so it was it was definitely difficult because i had to go back and use like the translation app on my phone just to confirm just because like even the translation was kind of broken up and some things weren't translating properly i was like this doesn't really make any sense and so like having to go back and confirm things with the translation app just to make sure i'm like okay is this where the sentence ends because it's like it sounds like he's pausing but i don't know if he's taking a breath or if the sentence mm -hmm. is over here oh. and so that was difficult and i i think we got it right i'm pretty sure we got it right but now i'm a little bit nervous about it um <laughs> But I thought it was really cool to have a, a interview in there. We did that with Guy last year too. That's not in English. Mm -hmm. When you you see the finished product and you watch it, I'm sure there's. Let's start here. What are the things that you know you wish you could have done maybe a little bit better? Mm, wish I could have done better. I mean, I think there's there's just a lot of storylines. Like I wish I could have expanded on a little bit more. Um, one thing I do wish I, I could have done was, excuse me, was expand a little bit more on how much, what it meant to have a new programmer um, mm. programming the games, because that really threw a curveball for athletes. Because I think historically, they're like, okay, they know Dave's programming, they know what to expect on what day. And um, this past year, they, they, they were like, yeah, this is not, I remember somebody was telling me, they're like, yeah, today's supposed to be like a gymnastics day, what's going on? I was like, well, <laughs> you've obviously gotten too comfortable. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. a new programmer in town. You don't have a gymnastics day anymore. You don't have a heavy day anymore or anything like that. Now everything's gotten thrown for a loop. So I think I, I, I wish I'd been able to expand on that a little bit more. Flip side of that, what are the things that you're, you, know, you watch? And there's a, like I said, there's a lot of great stuff in there. But what are your, the things where you're like, we absolutely nailed that. That's outstanding stuff. I don't, you know, let's, don't touch that. That's what we're going to hang our hat on as far as, you know, this doc is concerned. I, again, I think I go back to the Ricky story. I'm really happy mm -hmm. with how that turned out. Cause I think it, for me, it was a goal to make sure that we told his story correctly because on a personal level, I really like Ricky and I think he deserves to be back in the space and I, I am, I'm really happy he's here. And so I really wanted to make other people feel that. And I hope that that's the mm -hmm. case. Um, but I definitely walked away from every single edit that we work through thinking yeah i'm a big ricky fan i think that, that i think we, mm -hmm. we're telling this story right mm -hmm. we're talking about a lot of creative elements of, of your process and things like that but uh for maybe some people who aren't familiar with you and you and your work over your career i mean where where would you say you draw a lot of your creative influences and what are some key things along the way along your journey that have helped bring you creatively to where you're at to make this film Man, um, a lot of it was, I mean, I started doing this when I was, I think I started working for the update show when I was 19, about yeah, to turn yeah, 20. Yeah. And so a lot of the stuff that I've learned, a lot of the inspiration that I've gotten has been within the space. Um, 
from my peers, from the likes of Ian Wittenberg and Torn Simpson and Heber and Mars and all of them and, and you guys. And, and then also from like the reaction of the community, find it, figuring out what they like, what they don't like, things like that. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the learning has come just by doing it and then working alongside really talented people who took me under their wing and took the time to teach me stuff. It, it's funny. I remember the exact moment that Torn, I think you had made a, a like a promo video for your gym. Mm -hmm. I, maybe it was in Lompoc, yeah. I think. And, and he yeah. was like, hey, I think this 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 girl from my gym can could help us out here. Here's a video that she made. And we're, we all like sat down to watch it together as like a team. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Call her. Hit her up. And then like, I don't know. I, a couple weeks later, or something like I that. I haven't heard that story. Oh yeah, yeah. A couple <laughs> I weeks later, that. yeah. You come yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, you're in the office. Like, oh okay, yeah. Here's Mariah. Like, here we go. That's funny. I have not heard that story. That's awesome. Yeah, I like to tell Torn. I'm like, none of this would have happened if you hadn't. And that's the case with like all. I mean, every step in life, you're like, I wouldn't be here if you hadn't. Mm -hmm. You know, so and so hadn't done X, Y, and Z, and this person hadn't done this, and this person hasn't done that. You know. And so it's like, it's really mm -hmm. cool to go back and be like, hey, Torin, I wouldn't be married to Tyson. I wouldn't be making these documentaries. I wouldn't have been doing this if you hadn't been like, hey, Mariah, you know, there's an op opening for an internship with CrossFit. Are you interested? And I, you know, that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Been here right yeah. now doing this. For sure. <laughs> One thing that, that I thought was, you know, and this is personally for me that, that I, I liked about this is that seeing the stuff with Tia and Shane behind the scenes, especially towards the end, has me pretty convinced that, you know, they both thought that this was going to be it. <laughs> and, you know, the, you, thank you. You, you. you edited the call like that I made at the end. Like you changed that. And I'm like, you know, you're the one that talked to me about it beforehand. Um, and uh -huh. I'm just curious, like from your standpoint, how did that whole thing go down? Because again, after watching it, I'm like, oh yeah, she was done. Because there's a couple yeah. moments in there where like, she would not have said what she said had she been thinking about coming back. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I think what happened was is that I think Sean – or it's not, sorry, Shane told me to tell you to make the call. But mm -hmm. Shane – maybe didn't think about telling Tia that he had told <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And so um so after the event when everybody's scrambling because she kind of left it open ended, I was like, uh Tia, um Shane asked me to go talk to Sean and she was just like, Oh, oh okay, that then that's it then. And that was like after everything had happened. Mm -hmm. So I was, that was yeah, because then was they like, ran Kiki oh. out there to like say that thing on the floor. And I remember your reaction, yeah. Tyson's reaction, like, "Well, what? Do you, yeah, of course she's done." You know, like it was everyone was kind of, kind of yeah. shocked. And and again, just watching that, I was like, it did make like I felt a little better about it. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <Because> that's, <laughs> that's just a roundabout way for me to just say thank you. I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it was we all got thrown for a bit of a loop but you know like Oof, at the yeah. end of the day i think when you're at the top like that and i don't know i think she was she couldn't i mean she said it and this was like something that we didn't get to include in the the doc but she made a comment in the post interview where she said like she doesn't know if she'll ever be able to walk away from it she kind of just wants to get pushed out because that's a lot easier mm. and so yeah yeah, I, I think that that's a really hard space for anybody to be in to feel like you need to change or or feel like maybe you don't have the same kind of maybe fire in you anymore. And I don't want to project that if that's not really what she felt, but just from my observation, it was like, yeah, something's changed in you, Tia. And then, like honestly, I think having her baby was like the best thing for her. And I I really mm -hmm. do think she's going to be really scary next year. So, yeah, but was, yeah, there's a couple I, yes, times I walked said, away from the games being like, she's done. Yeah. Because there's a couple of bites that are, and I don't want to you know, spoil things, but she was saying how to, to what you just said, like there were some uncharacteristic things that she did throughout the competition. And that was sort of a sign to her. And it was just, mm -hmm. like I said, people need to watch it. And I think that like the, the ending is fantastic. Like bring a Kleenex. You're going to need it. There's, it's a tearjerker, like from all different angles, but, uh, yeah, I just thought there was some that that to me was the stuff that stood out the most. That was a really I thought it was a really good look at her and her and 
and her psyche that maybe we haven't had before. Like the first time I've ever heard her say, yeah, I probably could have done that better. Or maybe I wasn't as competitive as I needed to be. Not a question in there, just a statement. So. Yeah. And going into the final event, which really made me think that maybe she was done was um, usually like I, I've, I've gotten to know her pretty well and I've, we've really figured out um, a really good groove with shooting um, at the games. Like I've, I know how they operate. I know what they need from me. I know what they don't want from me, things like that. And I know that about 10, 15 minutes before she hits the floor, I take about five steps back and I stop asking her questions because I know she's going into that headspace that she needs to be in when she hits the floor. And just really respecting that that little time frame right before she hits the floor of like just letting her do her thing and going into the final event um, she was talking to me while she was in the corrals and she was laughing with her competitors on either mm -hmm. side of her. And like, I had never seen her like that in the corrals and I was going into the final event. I was like, Oh, she's done because I've never seen her not be in that headspace before. And that was something that like, I wish we had also been able to include, but time, time yeah. constraints, you know? So yeah, things like I that, like... So, that I thought that was, yeah, go ahead. I know. I was just say like moments like that are. I feel like you learn a lot more. Like that's where you kind of like break new ground and learning about these like athletes and and that being one for Tia. But were there any other like behind the scenes moments, kind of similar, I guess, in that same vein, that you learn new things about athletes, whether it's you know Mal or Ricky or Roman, where you're like, oh, okay, I'm seeing you in a different light now, like different than I had before. It was really fun to see Fraser just walking around like a dad. <laughs> <laughs> that backpack <laughs> yeah he was like in full-blown dad mode like all weekend like he was getting food and he was like stressed out like a dad and i was just like this is awesome to see because i don't think anybody's ever seen fraser like this he was just like just stressed out dad it was awesome i really liked him like that <laughs> i think it, he came across great all right yeah i i, I have I, I was well i was gonna say one of the things that um I think we got more of too it, along that line is like you, moments when he interacted with people outside of just Mal. Like there are moments where he's like pumped for Justin mm. um, and talking to him, and and like or when Mal um, there was an event that Mal comes off the floor that you can tell he's just beaming with pride for her and so stoked for her, mm -hmm. and, and and I think it really kind of hammered home that 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 different viewpoint of him, but you can see some of the competitive fire in him that made him such a good athlete at the same time, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. And it was, it's funny to see the transformation in him because he and I even talked about it um, after the, the games last year. And he was like, yeah, he said, yeah, when I retired, I had, I had, I think he had publicly said like, when I retire, nobody's ever going to hear from me again. Like I'm done with CrossFit. Like I'm never coming back. And he's like, it, it's been really funny for me because it was like, he's learned to love it in a completely different way since retiring from individual competition mm -hmm. and to see that come out in him last year um, and in his coaching and in everything he's doing has been really cool because it, it really is. It's like, it's really cool to go, see him go from that crazy competitive individual athlete to this guy that actually just really loves being a part of this whole this whole thing yeah um and one one note that i had written down and i'm curious if you see it this way too the way the the movie jumps right in I, and the, the just the the pacing of it from the early onset it feels like it's almost like a direct sequel to last year in that like yeah you know clearly like you're jumping right in hey let's get this thing going let's get after it did you see it that way was there any intent behind that yeah for sure i think we've made I, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere around 10 of these documentaries. And I think we Oof. can't be treating them like standalone films anymore. This is a series. Mm -hmm. Like we gotta, we gotta own this. It's like, it's this, yes, people who haven't seen any of the films will stumble on it. People who haven't, um, don't know about CrossFit might stumble on it, but for the vast majority, I think it is return people who are watching it as a series. So that's how I have viewed it. I, I've been like, these aren't, it's not standalone films anymore these are this is a documentary series it's that's why i wanted to bring it back to the fittest on earth this episode mm -hmm. title you know because it's like mm -hmm. yeah it's time to jump in this is a continuation how did you choose a title for this one oh um 
Oh, I hate picking names. It's one of the hardest <laughs> things to do is to pick the damn name. <laughs> I hate it. So this year, we I was so stuck. I was like, I don't know what the heck to name this thing. And so Tyson and I reached out to a handful of people. I actually think we reached out to you guys too, didn't we? And we're like, mm -hmm. hey, if yep. you could summarize, if you could summarize the games in just a couple of words, what would it be? Because we were at a loss. And so we asked a few people. Mm -hmm. We got a few suggestions from like a handful of people. And then Boz actually came up with that one. He goes, I feel like oh. it was like this. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That sounds really cool. And it was this idea of, um, I mean, it's it's touched on briefly. Another thing I wish I could have expanded on more, which was this, the Greg quote, like, once you've mastered something, go back and play closer mm -hmm. attention. Yep. Um, so we kind of, that it was a play on that, essentially, about this go yeah. back so that you can go forward. I like that. I like that, like, extra little context. I think it adds to it for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think Justin was in there saying that, too. I think he, he like, that is in there. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a yeah, yeah. So that's that a, yeah. Yeah, but it was Boz that suggested the title, Retroactive. Right, right. What is, yeah, uh, so, what's next for you? it was a play on that what? whole concept. I'm taking a break for a minute, I think. I just, we have a well eight-week-old baby. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. I have an eight week old. Thank you. Thank you. So I haven't had like a good time off in a while. And so I think, <laughs> I think I might breathe for a couple months. So, and then not and then that we'll it's see. ever, it, not that it's ever easy, but you went through twins and now you have mm -hmm. just one. <laughs> like, is that, was that like swinging two bats in the on deck circle and then now you got one when you're up like it's like just a lot lighter of a lift or not oh my god i feel like all of you people with one baby are just you guys don't know i'm like this is so I, easy you're right yeah because <laughs> i, I like, told tyson this i thought about you guys all the time when i was dealing with one like one new one i'm like i don't know how people with two at the same time could even manage this like my head would explode so just curious how oh if that, oh, it's, that was oh it was survival mode it yeah, it's, I was like, man, it's been so crazy and eye-opening for us this time around because we're like, this is crazy. This is so easy. Like, we can like, look at this. I can, I can work out and you can hold the baby. Like, that wasn't possible before. It was like, you have two babies. You're immediately outnumbered if somebody, if you know, if you're taking a shower and the, your spouse has mm -hmm. the, the twins. Also, though, I think we were at a disadvantage because I think the transition from zero to one is really hard anyway. And so I and so I think the, zero, the transition from zero to two was just insane. And mm -hmm. so I don't know. I think it might not have been. I don't think it would have rocked our world quite as much if we had one kid first and then went twins. Um, but yeah, we were definitely. Yeah. Oof, that was hard. All of this <laughs> with just one baby feels so easy. <laughs> it feels it's awesome. I was like, we could do this yeah. again. We can keep going. Tyson, he's like, no, no, we're done. I was like, well, I feel like we can keep going. <laughs> you cut off. <laughs> no more. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he's like, don't come near me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just so we so the the when this is released, the movie will be out. Where's the best place people can find it? How can they find it? All that good stuff. You know, um. I don't know. I don't have all the answers to that. I know it's available on iTunes for a handful of places and then um, Amazon. And you know what? Let me go look on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I, I think, Tommy, do you have I, feel, I think, I think like we an actually. Ever moving target. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we actually recapped it on our show. Let's or, sell some movies. I think you did. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, we'll just refer people back to the beginning of this episode. <laughs> We have all the uh, <laughs> all the information there. So, oh, that's great. Well, I just listen, I feel Mariah, like every year it changes. Every year, yeah, it Sorry, does. Um, no, I was just say best of luck moving forward. Uh, we, thank you for letting us watch it early. Uh, like I said, you know, you're going to get a lot of great stuff. But the last like 20 minutes, I think, really just mm -hmm. like I said, stuck the landing. Uh, you're going to get emotional. Um, there were some some great moments and and shots and and yeah, well done and. Uh, Congratulations on another successful uh, documentary, and you know I hope it does really well for you guys. And thank you for including us. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. A big thanks to Mariah Moore for taking the time to do that. Um, 
that's crazy. Three weeks before, I didn't know that. I can't believe that. That the fact that they pulled that off with that amount of lead time to me is nuts. Because just from a broadcast standpoint, and this is like, hey, fixed cameras, where we're going to put everything, how we're going to do like that takes a bunch of planning, and we're not like physically following athletes around everywhere, trying to you know track every story. And the fact that they were able to put together, you know, a, a pretty good hour and 40 minute movie that has the amount of, you know, I think really cool moments that it has mm -hmm. is a real credit to them. And it, it certainly puts some things in perspective because I think, you know, you, you watch these and, and you go, oh, I, you know, and it, it doesn't, not, one way is not right, one way is not wrong. But you just wonder as to like, why, um, you know, why make this decision as opposed to that decision? Why do this as opposed to that? And a lot of it just has to do with, you know, things that you might, I might prefer to see as opposed to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But the three week lead time on that is nuts to me. It's, it, it's funny. Cause it kind of joggled something in my brain as we were, you know, talking with Mariah it's like three weeks. That's not a lot of time to like, you know, to get that organized. And then I was kind of thinking, cause we've obviously were, we're a little clued in on some of this stuff, but I was like, what? I haven't seen a ton of like promotion of, of the, I haven't either. I just went back between, okay, so like obviously semifinals dominate the news, right? Sure. But between up until, so as of yesterday, so up until what, two days before release, uh, between semifinals and, and yesterday, pretty much, there have been two posts on social. That's it? That's it. Is, I was like, I was okay. like, why don't, why don't I know? I always felt that when we were, you know, when we were all under the same banner doing these and they would do these documentaries it always seemed like we were promoting it all the time like we would we, every time we oh, do yeah. an update show we'd run a trailer we'd have interviews we would do all over the place and, and so Be just two yeah because i mean well and this is why you want to promote right because pre-orders and things like that affect how your movie is ultimately represented on the different platforms right like if they get a bunch of pre-orders right. then then the movie will show up on like the the hot like what's hot, what's happening, what's trending, you know, the rotators at the, at the home screen. Could, like if you click documentary on iTunes, it's going to be like, this is what's even, even before it's released, like the pre-orders affect how the algorithm works for the platforms in promoting it and getting it in front of new eyes too. So it's, it's weird to me that there's been basically no promotion of the movie on the, on the, on social, right? There was a June 10th. Uh huh. That was, was the a, movie poster, right? A movie poster. That was a week after, after, semifinals and here's the thing you know you know well ahead of time when that movie's get getting published and delivered so they definitely had plenty of time to to promote it but i don't understand why and then after that i'm kind of going through just because when, when she was talking about it, i'm like wait a second i haven't seen some of the artwork and like yeah well when i was told it was coming out and we're recording this the day before recording this thursday but for all intents and purposes today i was like really yeah that and I, and it just i don't know it just hasn't been top of mind for me I, I don't and then and then five days ago so 24th so two weeks later after they published the uh the the um movie the po poster, movie poster yeah. there's a quote that i think i'm on it actually uh that i think includes one of my quotes that it's like a reel of just kind of like getting ready for a retroactive mm -hmm. film pre-ordered today link in bio and then in the last 24 hours, they've posted twice. So I, I don't know. It does, doesn't make sense to me. I, I always say this. Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean it's wrong. But right? It, but I, so I don't know. I don't, maybe, maybe look, maybe, and we're, again, we're, we're talking about this on Thursday. Maybe there's a huge push over the weekend and they're like, it's yeah, possible. You know, and that's okay. Oh, great. But to your point about pre-orders, I just need someone to explain that to me as to what the thinking is there, because this is the one piece of content that they put out that has the potential to make money for them. Well, they, they definitely make money very yeah. quickly. Expose the sport, maybe to new people who, who just might take a look at it over the rotary. You know, I have, I've run into people in my own life. Uh, you know, I play beer league hockey and the guys on my team, they have no idea what I do. You know, they don't know what I'm involved in. And one guy on my team saw the documentary. He's like, yeah, I just happened to watch it. I didn't know that you were involved in that. Yeah. You know, like that's the kind of reach that this thing has. This gets you out of the bubble yeah. and to have to only, well, okay. I don't get it, man. I don't either. But, uh, hopefully there's a big push and hopefully people watch it. Cause, um, I, I thought that 
because I mean, we had, it was good. It, you know, it was good. It's enjoyable. If you're a CrossFit Games fan, you're going to like it. There's some good stuff behind the scenes. There's like, especially the end. I really and and I, I, I it's funny because when you're in this world, you tend to watch things with a more critical eye, you know. And mm-hmm. and again, you just might have stylistic issues and be, I wouldn't have done it that way or whatever. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just it is what it is. But I was really. I remember when those last twenty minutes started. Man, I was dialed in. Like it was. They did a very nice job of wrapping it all up. I thought. Yeah, for sure. That final ramp up, it just, it, yeah, it was super emotional. And we, we, I'm, I'm glad you talked with Mariah about like some of the adjustments on the, on the fly of yeah. like the call and stuff like that. Because again, like there, there was some uncertainty and, you know, it's, I, I like the way it was ultimately kind of wrapped up a little bit mm-hmm. here. And man, I mean, if, if you're listening, go out and go out and get the film, support it because, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't realize it until now, but looking at the, the, the lack of traction because i was yeah when they when i when we were talking about this i said like, well that kind of sneaked up and i was like yeah oh well because you thought it was releasing next week i did and i was like no it's this week and you're like well i haven't seen anything about yeah. it and i was like i i haven't either i just i have I, I checked the game site regularly so i i came across a an article on the game site but i mean there was very little on social you know especially for CrossFit, CrossFit Games has 1.7 million Instagram followers, so pump it out on that. Let's go. That would, yeah, it'd be nice because it's a, I think it's a one piece of content that the community always looks forward to, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it, um, they're, regardless of whether or not they put everything in there that you would want. And I, and I, again, I think that's like, it's, it's an impossible task to, to take a competition this long with this many participants and this many great storylines to boil it down to an hour and 40 minutes. Like Mariah said, you're just going to cut out, out stuff that you would love to put in there, but you just can't do it. I, you know, it's almost like you do need, I think like a, an episodic kind of series to, to really do it justice. Ooh, <laughs> sorry. I, I made the mistake of, I exited out of like searching on social and you know, they like, they yeah. they uh, offer up like suggestions mm-hmm. for you. Clearly, they know I was a kid that was raised on the on the the TV show Jackass because a <laughs> clip of of Steve-O doing the the skateboard shin guillotine. Oh, he drops a skateboard onto his shins. Is uh, oof, man, that's brutal. Yeah, but uh, and then like you mentioned, just getting back to the whole uh, the whole thing with Tia, I was really just from a personal standpoint curious on how they were going to do that because in the post interviews, I remember being asked specifically about, hey, what happened? How'd that go down? And uh, they they made that you know the decision to just let's just fix the call and make it not say final time and then not deal with the retirement thing and yeah and all that and 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 it was good for me to watch that because i you know i left those games with a pretty bad taste in my mouth after everything that that happened you know i just didn't like the way that it ended uh and you know it Oh yeah, you you want to make sure that and you to, do right, right? Yeah, and to yeah. see you know to see what the Tia was going through and Shane they, what they were going through behind the scenes it, i was like oh yeah i think they were pretty convinced that this was done yeah yeah, because there's a, there's a couple quotes in there that specifically made me made me think that. But yeah, yeah, looking forward to to Tia's return. I think that's <laughs> whoo, that's gonna be uh that's gonna be fun. But yeah, go go check it out. It's it's a it's you're gonna enjoy it. Um, you know, pre order it if, if by any chance it's just, you know if you have a chance to still pre order it, you might have to have a flux capacitor to accomplish that at this point. But yeah, there's some go yeah great go great quotes, some go great athlete quotes mm-hmm. in there that I just just a handful of, like. That was my favorite part of it was that where the the behind the scenes. Yeah, and I think that's that's the stuff that you know. It's like the when you watch an NFL football game, you watch the game broadcast, you know, and then especially like the Super Bowl, and then you go back and you watch like the hour long thing they do that's the NFL films producing where they have mic coaches and they have all that yeah. stuff, and then you're like, oh, you get to see things from a different perspective, and you know, you maybe learn things about the game that you didn't know, and that's kind of what this reminds me of is that you're you know you get to see the same plays and the same moments that you saw from a broadcast cam. It's prettier, and then you get that added perspective from some of the athletes. And again, there was some stuff that I learned about some of the things that went down in some of the events, specifically with like Roman Krennikov in the back nine that I didn't know. I was like, and, "Oh, that's that makes a lot of sense as to why that then happened." You know? Same with the pool. Yeah, the way he uh, you're going to hear his like approach to the pool has me convinced that like like you always say that. Like if you peeled his skin off, there'd be like this the T one thousand like Terminator uh, metal like underneath him. You're like this guy is not human the way he approached yep. that. Mm-hmm. But and and even like there's a quote from Belner about it that is just gold too. Yeah, there's some really good stuff in there. So check it out. iTunes. Where else? I think Xbox, Voodoo, uh, v- Voodoo uh, Vimeo, uh, Amazon. Mm-hmm. So right. 
Let's uh, let's get let's move some movies. Yes. All right. Uh, let's get into you want to do crazy things we saw. There's only two of us. We're still going to do it. Yep. And I, w- I will say this about the movie. I think pretty much every single CrossFit doc has made at some point worked its way into the top 50 top, uh, best-selling documentaries on iTunes at all uh, uh, of all time. All right. Let's so get it there. Let's get it there again. Yeah. Let's you know? rally. Uh, crazy things we saw. I'm going to go. So I'll start. And in the spirit of the title of the new movie, Retroactive, I'm going to go with a retro one because it is the we talked about this earlier. It is the 25th anniversary a couple days ago of the famous Undertaker versus Mankind Hell in a Cell match. Oh. That featured so many crazy things that people saw, like Mankind getting thrown off the top of the cage into the table, getting thrown through the cage on a pile of tacks. I mean, stuff that, like, if if you were a kid at that time and you watched it, pro- and I know you were, yep. probably had a profound effect on your life. And that you still watch those highlights, and it is, that is one of the craziest things I have ever seen. We were having a sleepover at my buddy Ziad's house. And we were so excited for this match. And I just remember the first time when they're up on top of the hell in the cell and you see him like grab, uh, see Undertaker grab mankind. And you're like, no. <laughs> and he just throws up. And it, it's one of JR's best calls. Well, and I think that's our, that's our good guy. Isn't that, that, yeah, good I can't, reach, I can't reach the button, but it's, it's way across the room. But that's where, we, that's where that came from. So it, it's kind of a lazy one. Where God uh, is my witness. He is broken smack, damn it. <laughs> but I think I think it's apropos given the title of the retroactive documentary that we just promoted. So I'm going to go with the 25 year anniversary of the Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and Mankind. What do you got? I I got one that I saw earlier. It's from Ocean Allurement on Instagram. Uh, all sorts of nope. It's this woman <laughs> oh, I know, that uh, I think I sent it to you. you in did. She's out in an open water swim and immediately into the frame comes a baby orca and you're like oh geez given all the news recently about the orcas and then the camera continues to follow her and then two more orcas come into frame the mama and another baby and you realize it's a full orca family swimming underneath this woman and you're like oh how how does this end well and there's a moment when you can start to see the 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 beach break Uh uh-huh you're like, oh, she's actually pretty close. She could probably swim in, and she doesn't. And she keeps going, and the orcas are like basically in the shallows, like right up on the on like the whitewash of the surf. And you're like, they can go that shallow, and which is also terrifying. No. But then, um, you know, I I went down the rabbit hole that is the internet, and <laughs> apparently, this person swims with these orcas all the time. And it's like a common thing. The orcas know him or her. I, 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 th- I, think, I think it was a woman. Uh, the, the orcas know her, and she's like totally comfortable swimming with them. Okay. That's, that's one of those hobbies that has very little. There's, like, there's no really room in between. It's like successful dead. Yeah. You know, it's well, like there's no. You remember that movie Grizzly Man? Did you ever see no. that documentary about that guy that wanted to live with the grizzly bears? No. That's and everyone not a told him he was either. crazy. And it. It ends exactly how you think it ends. He gets eaten by and mauled by a grizzly bear. Oh. You're like, well, Shocking. okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, those are our, our crazy things that we saw. We got some good stuff coming up. Of course, uh, here in the U.S., we got the 4th of July weekend coming up. Um, but we are going to have CEO of CrossFit Don Fall on soon. We are going to have Justin Medeiros on. We have an interview with Emma Lawson. Uh, we're going to get Sydney Wells soon. Got a lot of good things uh, coming up, and then we'll continue to get you ready for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games that are now a matter of, what, four weeks away? Oh, boy, yeah. I, I heard mean, that le- today, le- and I was le- like, Less what? than that. Less than that. Man. Okay. Yeah, less than four weeks away. All right. That's – where does – I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we, it was just like a week ago we were doing the Open. It feels like, feels like a week ago we were – at Camp Pendleton. <laughs> That's true. That does. One of the <laughs> longest days of my entire life. That There should be a documentary on that day alone. Just the Pendleton thing. Oh, my God. If you could, if there was behind-the-scenes footage of all the craziness and yeah. some of the stories that came, I want to put JR's voice just like uh, it's Numi, uh, oh, Numi Katrin yeah, Arson just, coming back from the hospital. Man, that's uh, crazy. 
All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen or watch. If you're checking this out on YouTube, really appreciate it. Thanks so much to uh, Mariah Moore for taking time to join us and talk about you know, Fittest on Earth Retroactive. Go check it out. You know, We want to help out the community. We want to get good content out there. Uh, and you're going to enjoy it. It's just, it's, it's a good it's a good way to spend an hour and 40 minutes. You'll have a good time. Uh, that is it. Have a safe 4th of July weekend here uh, in the United States. Everybody else, take care of each other, be better, and we will talk to you guys next time.